Grand Pluses and Minuses. Welcome to the Lions of Liberty podcast. Here is your host, your guide, your shining beacon of liberty, Mark Clare. Well, 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 here we are. Once again, we bring you another edition of the Lions of Liberty podcast. This is episode number 186. And that means if you're playing along at home with your bingo card, you can find the show notes at lionsofliberty.com slash 186 bingo. Bingo! Uh, Hey, who is that? Jumped in early, but hey, why not? We'll we'll just get into things because I do have a special guest in the studios today. We actually have not spoken in quite some time, at least in Lions of Liberty continuity. Uh, We have spoken in real life a little bit, but uh, you're out with a little, what what was wrong? What was ailing you? Well, I had some back surgery on a herniated disc, which uh, I'm not going to recommend it to our listeners. Let me tell you, if you can avoid it, avoid it. Uh, Do drugs, kids. Do not do back surgery. All right, but you did back surgery, so you're not really setting a great example here. No, that's true. I did do she it. Just you know, do it for fun. Or? I did it. <laughs> just for, you know, I just like to throw out a little well, back surgery here and there. Try always it. wanted to try back New surgery. New experiences, you know. Gosh. Yeah, no, yeah, I had to do it. I was in so much pain, so I'm glad I did it overall. I'd say it's, but it's been a long recovery process. It's annoying, so I'm, I'm edging my way back into society slowly. And so much has changed. There's so much chrome everywhere. The world around me is different. Now, Brian, I got to just ask: Have you had any? Uh, difficulties dealing with your insurance companies throughout the process of the surgery. And this is not a pre-planned plug, although it might turn into one. I am actually curious. Well, to be honest, I have not. I have insurance through my work, so See, I'm all really, right. Yeah, I, I'm taken care of, fortunately. I'm not an independent Low contractor. deductible. Yeah, I mean, it's like my deductible. I'm going to have to pay about 20% of the surgery cost. Now, I've not gotten the bill yet. Oh, yeah, okay. So, so that's going to we'll, be the exciting maybe time. Maybe we'll readdress this oh, question when you get the bill. A special edition of, oh, my God, this yeah. bill is huge with Brian McWilliams. So we'll see how that turns out. It might be very terrifying. All right. But, you know, if your work does not provide you insurance and you do purchase your own, as I myself have for the past, oh, eight or ten years, God, I'm old, uh, then you might want to seek an alternative from our great sponsors at Health Excellence Select because they have this great thing called health sharing, and they have this entire system to manage your health care for you without having to deal with bureaucracy because these guys are actually a nonprofit and they're just setting up a system where we can all share each other's medical costs. Like-minded people, it's actually called Liberty HealthShare, the health sharing group. So, hey, what's better than that? So, please do look into our sponsors at Health Excellence Select. It's a great alternative to the standard Obamacare insurance out there for those of you that have that choice to make. So, you can find out more information at lionsofliberty.com slash health. Isn't that lovely? It is. And speaking of health, so, as we mentioned, I had this surgery and they put me under. They put me deep under. I didn't feel anything. You know, I went in there. They gave me some Valium. That eased me into it. And then the guy, that's all I remember basically. is like, I remember being wheeled into the emergency room or the uh, the operating theater. And then that was it. Operating theater. Is the that operating what it's called? Theater. Yes. I hope there were people watching from the rafters, you know, like in the old yeah, don't, school like, style. Don't med students some, do that sometimes? They'll they just, drop, like, they stand drop, around like, and watch. Yeah, they drop junior mints into your chest like on Seinfeld. There you go. I think that was a Seinfeld. There's a reference. But here's the thing. Now, we're here for a very special show. We are. I'm a little sad. I'm not going to lie. It is sad. Well, we'll do some other uh, we'll sort of little hits, you know. Okay. We won't reveal them this yet, but there'll be more coming. This isn't the end for us? Well, it's it's not for us, but it is for what the show is. And what is it? The final edition of Rand Paluses And Minuses. And Minuses. So when I woke up from my anesthesia, the world had changed. Momentously. How, you might ask? Was there a zombie apocalypse? No, fortunately. I brought my shotgun, which did not go over well trying to you get You were expecting minutes. that, though. You just woke up with the, in the surgery bed with oh, a shotgun? Well, either a zombie apocalypse, a Godzilla apocalypse, a metal apocalypse, if Zika you like virus? that show. Zika virus. Yeah, apocalypse. Zika. So I love, you know, it reminds me of the old dream. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Sounds like, Hold well, on. you're still under the effects of the... Uh, <laughs> well, I'm trying to remember what that, that Zima, it reminds me of Zima, the Zima virus. I was going to say, it sounds like a, del- a, delicious, <laughs> a, a delicious water alternative. Yeah, it really does. It's too bad. I trademarked it and then this virus came around, screwed me. But no, the world had changed. How had the world changed? Rand Paul was no longer a presidential candidate. Oh, no. Yes. So right off the bat, I think we can say that that in and of itself qualifies as a... Minus. Minus. Of course, this is on the heels, of course, of his campaign promising us 
that Iowa was going to be this big, momentous thing that he was going to shock the mm. world, that fireworks of liberty were going to shoot off. And of course, Rand got 5% of the yeah, vote. Yeah, what happened to all those precinct captains? Yeah, exactly. They were the only people that showed up. They were apparently. the ones who voted, yeah. and six of their friends each. Literally. Yeah. I'm not making those numbers up, because Ron Paul got a little over 7,000 votes, and he had a little over 1,000 precinct captains. So quite literally, each precinct captain got an average of six other people to come and caucus for Rand Paul. Which is awful. I mean, is that surprising? I mean, you don't. That that means. I mean, everyone's got six friends, so I got to think they each got six friends and then did no actual political outreach on top of that. Well, clearly they should have signed up their dogs and dead people, like I've read, as possible. Yeah, and in all seriousness, I don't want to downplay the efforts of like good Rand Paul supporters who are out there working hard in Iowa. I know it's not easy to convince people to vote for a candidate. I know it's not easy to get people out to caucus, and I know a lot of you were out there, at least 7,000 of you, so I definitely do appreciate the people that were out there because, look, at the end of the day, we spent a lot of time criticizing Rand Paul, but, I mean, I miss him already <laughs> as much as uh, as much as we, you know, poke at him. I miss his his way to at least be a somewhat rational voice in these debates and in the, uh, I mean, he's still making statements and stuff, but, and he'll be in a Senate race and all that, all that fun stuff. But it's, uh, man, it, that, that, just knowing there's really little hope for a, a remotely rational presidential candidate is, um, is sad. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. For me, I think Kasich might be the next most rational Hey, coming up hey, i know hey if you saw the last gop debate you can see which we'll link to in the show notes by the way our recap i don't disagree that he probably comes across as the least like boisterous like you know he seems crazy the most I, I, he at least seems to have some some thought it might be coming through his head slowly but he has some thought coming through and he also has been you know like he's his foreign policy has kind of stepped up he's you know non-interventionist now doesn't want to have regime change he is, he's a non-interventionist now as if because well, he said something in a debate it's gonna started, matter well he started off be having good foreign policy and then he kind of waffled a little bit now he's back to it exactly. which makes well, me happy that's it's the waffling that worries me yeah, same well, thing with ted cruz i mean yeah. ted cruz sounds good to liberty people one minute the next minute he sounds like a total neocon because all these guys are doing is they're doing the Rand paul walk actually they're yeah, walking exactly they're walking the lines of reason and warmongering and torture and and all the stuff that, that all the keywords that to get votes from one area all the keywords to get votes from another area and i don't trust any of them because they're all doing the same thing the only one who's really not he's doing a different kind of trick a different parlor trick is trump he's just saying stuff all over all over the place all over the map Oh, yeah. Well, did you see his response to the Pope, where the Pope had yeah, said it was unchristian to want a wall? And then he broke down. Trump's response was so on message. He hit, like, every point about, like, you know, winning and losing and, and uh, and you know, staying on Christianity. And, like, he hit all well, of his And how the Vatican marks. has a wall around it. He's like, well, I mean. <laughs> well, I said, why don't they just put a Pope mobile around the U.S.? Then everybody wins. There you go. Pope can't complain about that. That's true. But no, you're right. Everybody's like zigzag. It's like running from a crocodile is the same as running for president. Wait, if you're uh, if you're in this, you're zigzagging from point to point to try to please everybody to avoid getting tagged. It's just there's no way to, to tag anybody on their actual platform anymore because people were just like, okay, what's going on? They're all Hillary Clinton tag. at this point. And that's the one good, th- not the one good thing. There are many good things about Rand Paul, but that's one of the good things. Is I mean, even on areas we disagree with him on, I mean, he's been pretty consistent at least I'd say on his positions. Well, has- over- See, over the presidential campaign, or maybe not. No, because so, I, okay. I, I say he well, has. Here I am trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. No, no. it's not even working. No, sorry, All right, Randy well, set Pants. me wrong. Let, let, let's talk about that then, because well, this is a more a look back. This show is meant to be a, a brief little look back at the campaign itself, and basically just to have a final edition of the show, which as I know is a fan favorite for many of you. And this show will be dying right now. This is the death. It's, this, it's, this it's stage it. seven cancer. I don't know. And then it, this is sunlight is to the a, vampire. Is, is a higher is stage worse or? Is the lower stage worse? You know, I have no idea. I don't know if All it's right. like Depcon, where it's like okay, well, it's a really bad stage of cancer. <laughs> yes. And uh, by the end of the show, Rand Paul and Minuses will die a grisly death. So get ready for that sound effect. I don't know why it has to be grisly, but that seems like it'd be appropriate. But um, don't worry, we'll still do some fun stuff in the future. Yeah. We'll figure it out. So, it, but. To your point, saying that Rand was, uh, you know, stayed on his point, I, I agree for the most part he did, but you look at his campaign and how he, you know, he started off being very, oh, I'm quasi-libertarian, and then he slowly, as the campaign went sour, got away from his GOP points and started embracing more libertarian points. So that was a definitive change that happened through the campaign, and I think that, you know, that's part of what the demise, basically. I don't know. That- I kind of saw it as just a, a product of ha- the debate questions a lot of the times. Like some debates in the beginning were focused more on, 
you know, like economics or the budget. And then he just kind of in that stuff, he doesn't really sound that much different than other Republicans. And, I mean, he does definitely sounds different than, say, Rubio, maybe. Not, and well, now it's different than Ted Cruz. Now that Ted Cruz is out there saying he wants like a bigger budget than bigger military budget than George Bush had and, and all this stuff. So but yeah, basically, when he's talking about the size of government and economics, like he's not compelling. He's not going to fire anybody up at all. He just kind of sounds like a standard Republican, Uh, the Republican line of, you know, shrinking government, lowering taxes. I mean, it's stuff I agree with, but it's not, you know, it's nothing that's going to fire people up. You know, it's nothing that makes you stand out. And then when he finally did get some more questions about um, relating to criminal justice reform, like that good YouTube question um, regarding Ferguson, uh, that's where he starts to shine a little bit more because that's where he really is able to separate himself. And I just saw that a lot of that stuff just kind of coming as as debate questions got tossed to him in a different ways. Well, yeah, he had to wait on justice reform, which, you know, he could have brought it up in an opening or closing statement as well, true. let's not forget. This but also true. his foreign policy, that's a main point of differentiation between Rand and everybody else, because Rand at the very end finally was like, hey, we got to stop messing around in the Middle East. We have to absolutely stand up to regime change. Look at the power vacuum that's going on. Look at what's happening with ISIS. You know, this is our fault. This is all due to blowback. So, He didn't get into that until very late on because he didn't want to piss off the GOP base. So overall, though, would you say that, I mean, is it Rand's actual positions that were inconsistent or is it just the subjects that he that he talked about weren't consistent? I guess you could say that his the topics talked about were, you know, inconsistent because he didn't make it a point to talk about the things that he believed that were kind of differentiating from the GOP base. He kind of just, you know, glazed over them. You know, he just uh, was happy to not bring them up lest he be targeted by the more conservative people that tie into the mainstream. Yeah. And like you said, he did he did have chances to bring it up because everyone gets an opening statement. Everyone gets a closing statement. And he very well have could up brought up issues of criminal justice reform, of the war on drugs, of the uh, the two Americas, anything like that, you know, just just to lead people down that path and really show them that I am different. I think about things differently than these people people or to put out his views on foreign policy, which he never wanted to address. In the cl- his closing statement was always basically, look, I'm an eye surgeon. Uh, I want s- government so small you can barely see it. And I'm an eye surgeon, so I know how, how what the size of that's supposed to be. Ha ha, yuck, yuck. And um, anyway, can I just go back to the Senate now? Like, he really seemed uninspired to me. I, yeah. I, I'm Honestly, through most of the campaign, I'm not saying he isn't. Maybe that's just his demeanor. I mean, maybe he just doesn't have that fiery, super fiery side that Ron Paul had up there. But to me, I just never thought this was some... It never felt like he really, really wanted to be president. He didn't really feel like he really wanted to be there pushing this message. So I'm not sure what he was doing up there, to be honest. I think he was not ready for the fight that was ahead of him necessarily because he had so much momentum going into his announcement that he was running for president. You know, time had been like, oh, the most interesting man in politics and national polls comparing him to Hillary Clinton. Heck, he why didn't winning. he why didn't he start off an opening statement with, well, you know, Time magazine actually called me the most interesting man in politics, and here's why. Right. And then put that message out there and look how different I am. Oh wait, time is covering me. So maybe I am a viable candidate. Maybe I am one of the if you people are afraid of the the Democrat winning and putting in a new justice, a Supreme Court justice or whatever. Because even before Scalia, they were saying the next president's probably going to put two or, or three in. So, I mean, it's it's at least one. It's probably it's maybe under Obama, maybe not. We'll see. But, um, you know, it, it's just... Well, that or just come out and explain why you are the definitive new face of the GOP. Why it needs to change. Why this is necessary. How the people that are backing it, you know, like, there's more independents right now than there are Republican or Democrat. It's like 41% to, you know, 29 on one side and 21% on the other side. You know what I hate about independents, though? They always end up voting for, they they is bitches. And that is an inside joke that most of you will never, ever (laughs) Never, hopefully never will know. (laughs) Anyway, we might let you on the the inside someday. Someday. No, but the thing that annoys me about independents is that they always end up voting for a Democrat or a Republican. It's just that they're waffling about which one because they aren't ideologically wed to one party. But statistically, those independents, when they do go to the polls, it's not like that percentage of people is voting third party. No. They're not independent. They're dependent on the two-party system. That is they're an just not. Point. They're just not wed to one side of it. But that, they're not dependent. They're they're not independent. I have voted third party since 2004. Not to tout my creds. I'm just saying I'm independent because I'm not independent of the two-party system. Whereas most quote independents are not. No, it's a good Rant point. Rant complete. That's a very good point. And you know we, we well. 
we could be mowing the two party system for a, a long, long time. It would take longer than this podcast, but I'll bring us. I want to bring us back to the topic of Rand Paul specifically here. Okay, it is his last show, so I suppose we can talk about yeah, it. Yeah, slightly, but let's you know, let's get into a little bit so uh, so as not to uh, to go on too long. Let's get into a little bit about the takeaways from his campaign. You know, he ran. Let's just overall. Let's just say right now. Do you think it was a good thing that Rand ran for president? That it occurred. Okay. Um, I'm going to say no. <laughs> wow. Okay. I, I'm not saying it's necessarily bad. Maybe time will tell. But to me, you know, Ron Paul had built a lot of coalitions along the way. All right. Constitutional conservatives built a coalition with Rand Paul, Ron Paul. Libertarians. Um, regular old Republicans that just maybe realized he's a better old school Taftian sort of Republican. They all sort of came together and Ron got Decent numbers, actually, in the presidential primaries for considering what he is, considering he is really technically a fringe candidate, uh, a guy just out there spouting libertarian philosophy, talking about not bombing everyone, talking about ending the war on drugs. And people talk about this stuff now. People actually do talk about this stuff now to some extent. They Nobody talked about this before. People might forget. People that didn't watch debates before 2008, nobody talked about these things. These were not things that were – it was assumed we're going to bomb people all over the world. It was assumed that we had a Federal Reserve that was never going to be mentioned in a debate. Things were just assumed. Ron Paul busted this paradigm open. And that's where his support came from. But along the way, he was able to build a lot of coalitions for people that you know saw their views lining up for with, with him in many ways, especially as he inspired more and more people and you know made t- millions in money bombs and all this stuff. On the flip side, we have the Rand Paul campaign, which clearly didn't do any of what I just described. Okay, so there's two reasons to run a campaign, or and they might not be separate reasons. They might both be happening at the same time. But you can either run a, I guess, purely strategic campaign where you're just trying to win. That's what many Rand Paul supporters said he was doing the whole time. He's running this strategic campaign. That's why he's got to say these certain things to please the neocons, but then say these certain things to please the libertarians and keep them around. Well, guess what? He did none of those things. Neither of those things happened. Neocons still think he's a quote-unquote isolationist and a crazy libertarian like his dad. Um, and then libertarians now don't support him in nearly the numbers that they support his father. So if neither of those two, and the, the, the other reason you would run a campaign is to purely, you know, be an educational campaign and purely be laying out liberty principles or, and, and ideals and that kind of thing. Well, that's not what Rand Paul was doing either. Rand Paul wasn't out there laying out his beliefs, laying out his principles. Occasionally he would work some of that stuff in. I'm not saying he doesn't have solid, you know, principles and beliefs, but that's not the message he was delivering. He was delivering policy messages based on being a constitutional conservative. All right, well, what the hell principles are involved in that? None, really. It's a political stance. And when you're just a political st- taking political stances, you're just another politician. And I think that's why those in Iowa, you saw the numbers. It was about a quarter of the votes that R- Ron Paul get, got. And Ron Paul was the one painted as the extreme fringe no-chance candidate, whereas Rand Paul started off as... You mentioned on the last show, he started off being talked about as a top-tier candidate and ended up as the fringe candidate. So what the hell happened there? So yeah, I'm going to say that based on that ranty analysis, no. What was the point? What was the point? And he's a great senator. He's the best senator by far. I think he's better than any other senator in there. As I don't, it didn't, he showed up for the most votes of anybody running, so I don't think it really hurt his what he was doing in the Senate. So I'm, it didn't detract from that. But I'm glad he's going back to the Senate. I think he should have just stayed there and maybe thought about running for president down the road when he maybe thought a little bit deeper about why his father's campaign had so much success. Longest rant ever. Yeah, and deserved. Jesus. I should I should keep going cuz I have I have strong oh, feelings I'm about this. I'm going to counterpoint you. Good. Okay. So, I do agree that the waffling back and forth between, you know, a libertarian or a conservative and not, you know, at first he's saying, "Oh, I'm a liberty leading conservative." That was, you know, awful. Annoying. It was confusing to voters. It was confusing to people that were maybe not maybe I, the first time Ron ran, they were said, "Okay, uh, it's interesting. Maybe he's a kook, but I like some of his ideas. Because it confuses everybody. Right, it does. Because they kept because the media kept calling him a libertarian. And so people are saying, oh, he's a libertarian. Rand saying, no, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Meanwhile, he's got but, some views that are. But sort of am. Yeah, but sort of am. So that, I agree, was, uh, was aggravating. However, I think overall he had to run, and it was a good thing he did. And I'll tell you why. All right. Now, as you mentioned, time had him labeled as the most interesting man in politics. All this was building up. So there was going to be no better time than now, essentially. 
And I'm gonna, and I'm actually gonna undermine my own point a little bit about. Oh, good. About that will now. make my job uh, more, but easier. But getting back to the point. <laughs> now, I feel though it was important that he did run uh, because not only is you know you had Ron Paul who had a good amount of support, you know, still a fringe candidate. Then you've got Rand coming in who was viewed from the get go though as a mainstream candidate. Now he effed up his campaign. We're not going to lie about that. He didn't run it well. His campaign had a lot of missteps in the way they went about things, the way his positioning was, but he was viewed as a mainstream candidate and given that status from day one. What he did with it from there, too bad. So that's good. We've got a libertarian that's now being accepted as a viable option to elect. Number two, I think. Wait, you mean quasi libertarian? Quasi, you mean quasi? quasi you mean constitutional conservative? You mean that? Uh, well, whatever. Still, no. He's he's. Most people would refer to him as a libertarian. So then you look at Just what's not happening him. now on, and we'll be. I'm sure we'll be talking about this soon. But because of the libertarian movement gaining more momentum, because a lot of people are still latching onto those ideas that are out there and still feel strongly about this, there is. For the first time I can remember, an actual debate for libertarians being aired on a real network. Holy shit! All right, now that's a good point. Now, would that have happened if Rand had not run? I say no. Okay, that's an interesting take, and I I agree that it's good to have a a channel, a place to register that vote, a place to register that that energy of libertarianism be, or individual rights, people that think along those lines, because now, even though Rand Paul is gone, it's true that people like Ted Cruz are courting his voters very strongly. Um, probably Ted Cruz is stronger than anybody because he... Yeah, he's really going after him, which if you're a libertarian, uh, avoid Ted Cruz, please. That's, Just stop it. Joke. Stop, stop it. Stop talking about him. <clears throat> we did a whole show about Ted Cruz, Ted Cruzin and Bruzin. And let's just say there was a lot more a bruising than a cruising. Black and blue. Bruising's bad, by the way. We will link to that in the show notes for the show, of course, over at lionsofliberty.com slash 186. So there. So go check that out. But that was episode number 175, our Ted Cruz breakdown. We don't need to go into it again, but I keep seeing it. I keep seeing it left and right. And he's terrible. And that's why I actually think he's the candidate. I hate the worst going forward. I think Rubio is the worst, really. But Ted Cruz is the worst worst because he's basically the same as Rubio on his policies, only he plays it up like he's a liberty guy. Now I'm done with Ted Cruz. Let's move on. Thank God Rand didn't endorse him. Thank God. Yes. Okay. So there's a positive. Why don't we talk is about this? Is it a this positive point? or is it a... Well, I just gave it away. I think it's a positive. Ballas! Ballas! <laughs> That's right. I'm going to turn my frown upside down because it is a Paulus that Rand Paul actually came out and stated that he will not endorse anyone in the primary. I had this weird nagging feeling that it was possible because he did endorse Ted Cruz in the past for Senate, because they have had coalitions in some areas, because at one point in the campaign, you believe them to have a coalition of their own. Did you I not? did. I swear to God, they had one because they were not going after each other. And then at, at some point, they must have been and like, no ended. more. Then that ended. Yeah. So... Because of that, I was suspicious that perhaps, perhaps, especially because I thought, I really did think Rand would stick through New Hampshire, but maybe he just wanted to spare that as well. Um, I thought that he might end up endorsing Cruz, and that really would have disappointed me quite a bit. So I'm happy that he did not. Yeah, as am I. And, and I'm glad he didn't endorse, he's not endorsing anybody. I hope he doesn't endorse anybody throughout. I mean, there's no reason for him to. I hope he's pissed off enough. You know, he says, you know, I'm not endorsing anybody for president or the eventual nominee. Screw it. Why bother? What's it going to get you? Well, exactly. It, it would get him nothing. <laughs> so I'm glad that he recognizes that and recognizes that he, if he does want to rebuild the base and, uh, you know, get the Liberty people back on his side more, a bit more back in his favor, uh, an endorsement of Ted Cruz will not help him do that. No, will... Not in any way. And, you know, one other thing I want to add, too, about why I'm glad Ran 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 Ran. Is that Rand, 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 He ran for president. Okay, we can do this all day, folks. And we will. And we will as soon as we stop recording. A very special podcast. No, there's one thing I wanted to bring up too: is that the topic of justice reform would have never graced the GOP stage ever. Ever. I'm telling you, ever. If not for Rand Paul being up there. Because even this question about Ferguson, that would have been glanced over. People would have been like, oh, yes, blah, blah, I don't blah, think blah, they blah. would have put it on TV. Probably not. <laughs> they no, wouldn't they have aired right. it. They, they only aired would. it because they could give it to Rand Paul. Yeah, precisely. And so it that, makes them seem, you know, like they care about anything. Yeah, that and the war on drugs. You know, he's the only one that's up there saying, yeah, the war on drugs is a joke. 
So those two topics as well being voiced, I think were very important. Well, Ron Jug's a joke in your town. Yeah. So that's two other things. And this is one thing I want to bring up too, is that um, one of the other things I mentioned when I wrote this, this column one, you know, to kind of sum up his campaign is that I wonder if maybe even though we're saying everything was in the right place for Rand, if it wasn't. And in fact, the, you know, we and their campaign overestimated the impact of, uh, or not the impact, but how long it would take for the people that supported Ron Paul that were younger. Like we were young at the time and a lot of people we were, were younger young. Us. So young. <laughs> and now we're not. <laughs> baby, baby faced use knocking on doors oh. for Ron Paul. Um, but you know, we were, we were, Hey mister, let me tell you about this 80 year old man running for president. (laughs) No, he didn't give me any. Shouldn't you be delivering the newspaper, little boy? Yeah. Be right back. Extra, extra. (laughs) All right. Anyway. Uh, but no, we, you know, we were fresh out of college. A lot of people that were rooting for were in college, freshmen or younger. So those ideas might've taken a little long to percolate. Those people might have to get a little bit older. Like, look at us. We're doing this now. Our websites come to fruition. Uh, we're much more matured, but there might be people that are a lot younger than us that haven't quite hit their stride yet. So maybe the libertarian movement is in fact four more years removed from what is now. So it's important to keep somebody in the in the spotlight to keep the next generation going and to remind the people that were excited about Ron, who might be pissed off about Willie Rand ran his campaign, but anyway, but to remind them, hey, look, this is not a one shot, you know, hey, you laid a match and it went out. Now we're screwed kind of thing. It's an ongoing movement. And really... We focus on the presidential stuff so much because it's what people are talking about. It's what people are watching. It's what's in the news. And that's what we want to talk about. What other people are talking about. It just makes sense to analyze things through that lens. But the fact is, in the big picture, you know what? I'm not going to lose too much sleep over who the president is. Because, yeah, there's stuff that matters. Supreme Court justices that they're going to select and all this stuff. You know what? If you really look back on that stuff, who gets the party of the person that selects a, the, a Supreme Court justice doesn't really line up on any ideological divide with that justice's um, rulings down the road. They do in some ways. We always talk about these 5-4 decisions, and I'm not saying there won't be bad rulings if Obama puts somebody in. I also think there might be a lot of bad rulings if Ted Cruz puts someone in. So I'm not going to worry too much about that stuff. At the end of the day, who is president is not the be-all, end-all. It's really not even the remotely most important race. It's not the what a the most things. Congress passes the laws. Uh, the Senate is extremely important. These are all races you can affect. And even more so on our own local level, you can affect things a lot more because, you know, it really does spring from the ground up. And even going deeper than that, really talking to your freaking friends and neighbors and the people on the other ends of this computer and focusing on the actual ideas and the actual philosophy of things and getting people to change their actual beliefs in our society is a heck of a lot more important than any of this crap that we've been spent months and months talking about. As long as you don't do it like a douchebag. As long as you don't do it like a douchebag. That's a very important thing I want key, to mention. Key element. Don't come across as a douchebag that knows it all because they will hate you and they will, out of spite, refuse to become libertarians. <laughs> There you go. Or to support liberty. That's a real thing. I know people that, 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 because they met someone who was a jerk to them once, will not, like, listen to (laughs) any arguments about anything. Oh, totally. It's like, all right, well, then, fine. Yeah. What so you, what are you gonna do? So that being said, you know, saying, you know, maybe this has inspired another generation, I'll counterpoint myself and say... Does Rand's failure uh, actually set libertarianism back or liberty, the liberty uh, movement back because he did fail so spectacularly after Ron had more traction and we thought he would. And then he took a step back and he got 5% and dropped out in shame. It's a long question. It is. Well, the crux of the question is, is this, has it set us back instead? Because it's now, you know what? He had the best shot uh, you could think of, and he still failed. So, you know, Liberty Party candidates are screwed. They're not going to do anything. So why bother? Why bother supporting? Well, that's certainly how their mainstream will spin his campaign. I'm pretty sure of that. Um, No, because I don't think Rand Paul necessarily represents, like, the progress of libertarian principles or the ideas of liberty or anything like that. I think his campaign represents the progress of his campaign. I I think it's more in a bubble than people might want to make it out to be. I think he really dropped the ball with the fact that he could have ran with what his dad built a little bit more, Um, but he didn't, and... He's a great senator, and I hope he keeps doing good work there in many ways. And, uh, you know, we'll see how things go. But Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's probably a glass full, glass empty thing. It's, 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 it comes from your point of view. You can take it as a positive. You can take it as a negative. I, I, like I said, I, I'm choosing to take it as a positive, but I completely understand if people are like, oh, no, now people are never going to respect libertarian candidate. Whatever. You know what? It's a candidate to candidate thing. Like you said, it's, it comes out of the campaign. All right. So what's our uh, any, any other issues we got to address from from the uh, 
the almost year long campaign that you've been covering here. No, I mean, I not year long. I guess in April is when he officially announced. But you've been doing this the column, Rand Paul S's and Minuses for a long time. You can time, find man. the full Rand Paul S's and Minuses archive over at Hey, let me do it. LionsofLiberty.com slash Rand. Cause, Good, because you I always put in the www. And yeah, you uh, had like HTTP <laughs> and like all this stuff. HTTP extra slashes, colon. more colons. It's like yeah, let's just keep it simple. Just go to your tripod webpage and and uh, anyway, uh, one more thing we can talk about if you want is what's sure. gonna, what's going to do with the money. What's he going to do the with the money, money, man? Well, he's still got a caucus to pay for it, don't he? <laughs> he does That's hilarious, isn't caucus. it? He's, gonna, he's already agreed to pay for the Kentucky caucus oh, so that he could be also in a primary ballot in Kentucky. It's like paying child um, support for a woman. So he could also run for night. Senate. It's a one night, Rand's one night stand. He's so got man, child support uh, payments for the caucus. So now he's going to end up paying for like Rubio or somebody to win, win Kentucky. Ugh. What if awful. Donald Trump won the Kentucky caucus and Rand Paul had paid for it? <laughs> it's so funny. So that's a question I have. Okay. Just a, a last question here, because I do think Rand Paul is going to go back to the Senate and do pretty good work and still be one of the better senators in terms of senators. You know, whether you think he's the greatest libertarian around, I mean, he's or whatever you think, yeah, he's not Murray Rothbard and whatever. OK, but whatever. But in terms of United States senators, like he's clearly the best. Right. I mean, there's yeah, not even by and far for, it's, it's for the, people that value individual rights and that yeah. sort of thing and just general reason and sanity. He's just I mean, it's not even close. Right. I agree completely. Even Mike Lee, who I want to like sometimes, like he like endorsed like Rubio. I mean, I, I just want nothing to do with these guys. Yeah. I agree. And uh, hopefully, you know, more people get in the Senate that can give Rand a run for his money as far as who's the most liberty, uh, liberty centric senator is. But maybe you should run for Senate. Me? Oh my God. I forgot. I saw this the other day. Mike, I went to go fact check myself. Mike Lee is campaigning both for both Cruz and Rubio because I couldn't remember which one I saw. And it's because he's he's not endorsing either, but he's campaigning for both of them. That's how waffly that guy is. So watch yeah. out for that snake. Who, who's on a, he's another Cruz type who acts like a liberty guy, but I don't trust one bit. Yeah, anyway. great. Because I agree. Yeah, just like you said, there's some things he he is pretty strong, and we go, oh wow, good job, Mike Lee. Usually it's like a co-sponsor bill, and then he's like, bomb him. them all. Like, oh, <laughs> okay, all right, chill. He's he's also doing the Rand Paul GOP libertarian dance, although he's far less libertarian. So. Anyway, we'll, we will keep tabs on Rand Paul in the Senate. Yeah, we may not do podcasts on him. Maybe a, maybe once in a while. Once a quarter. Maybe a little maybe. resurrected if something yeah. uh, significant happens. Yeah, something really maybe, momentous. Maybe he'll swoop back in at a brokered convention. Hmm? That's what, that's what other guys have been telling me this whole time. Yeah, right. well, I, I strongly doubt it, but we'll see. Guys, I love your passion out there. I love that you're supportive of this guy. But please stop with the, Rand Paul did not drop out. He only suspended his campaign. Yeah, Look, I support people to go vote for Rand Paul. If he's on your ballot and you support him, vote for him. Don't go vote for one of these other guys to be a front runner. Send a message that that's where your votes are. I absolutely wholeheartedly believe that. But let, don't live in a fantasy world that Rand Paul is secretly doing some thing where he's gonna usher in delegates and win a broker convention this is literally what some people believe is going to happen a lot of people believe it was gonna happen with ron paul too this is just not what's gonna happen guys i hate to break it to you so Absolutely just not. just let it go you know i, I will say I'm you will feel good. freer once you've let this go i promise you <laughs> it's like cutting off an ex-girlfriend exactly. uh, i'm sad that Rand will not be able Unfriend. to take part in the libertarian debate he wouldn't have been let in anyway but it would have yeah. been entertaining they'd to be see. like what was they'd all like this get, quasi stuff huh yeah, they get torn apart by uh by people you know on his stances that were more gop style which gotta be fun to watch be a hell of a debate yeah. stage though it's gonna be gary johnson austin peterson who i've interviewed mm -hmm. John McAfee, who I've interviewed. Love him. Not Steve Kerbell as of right now, who I've interviewed, who I actually kind of like as of right now, just based on his positions and based on my own personal conversation with him. Well, not personal. It was public. It was a podcast. I'll link to it. Uh, I like Steve Kerbell better than the other guys right now, so I hope he gets in the debate. But either way, just the fact that there is a libertarian debate that's going to be on Fox Business next month, we will, of course, cover that in some way, shape, and or form. Uh, that's a positive thing. And, you know, perhaps you can credit Rand Paul's presence and in this conversation with, you know, nudging people, nudging Fox Business, I guess, in that direction to see it as a point of profit to host a libertarian debate. Because if they actually think there's enough people that want to watch this, well, that's something. Yeah, we'll just see what the ratings are going to be for that. And hopefully they are high. Yeah. I should count as at least 15 people from Nielsen ratings. I'm going to go steal a box. Go, go find somebody's house, run in there with a gun. Just force them to watch the whole time. All right, so I think it's time to wrap things up. Why well, you get a little crazy for you? It's just hard to let go. It's hard to let go. It's so it really hard is. to say goodbye to Randy Payne.
Hashtag Randy Pants. We can yeah. ba- we can bury this hashtag too. I suppose. No, screw that, man. <laughs> hashtag Randy. The Randy Pants hashtag lives on with the senator moves. I'll still write about him from time to time. Randy okay. Pants. All right. Keep it going. Hashtag Randy Pants lives on, indeed. And um, let's see what else we got going on this week. I've got another interview coming up with uh, the lovely Heather Nixon from the Johnny Rocket Launchpad. That'll be our next interview this coming Wednesday. And then, of course, another great Felony Friday this Friday and next week. I believe you will be a uh, part of the crew joining us for another. Another GOP debate. That is correct. Show. The never ending debates. Never I, ending. I'm guessing it'll be trimmed down a little bit by then because some, someone's going to drop out by now. I don't now, think right? any of them will. I think they're all going to Carson, stick too. He's going to stay in. Carson's going to stay in at least. He's not going anywhere. Right. He's going to stay in as long as he can. He's yeah. like, got nothing better to do. Yeah, exactly. He's still polling like in the, in the you know, 13%. Not really, uh, not really fixing brains anymore. So I figured it would ruining just ruining brains, do this. some would argue. <laughs> Instead, he's ruining Every time brains. I watch him, I lose a few IQ points. Maybe this is all just a giant. He's going to drop out of the campaign and then just fix all the brains that he just melted (laughs) during these debates. (laughs) Pretty good idea. So, well, anyway, yeah, so that's coming up. Uh, We'll be going. And then, you know, down the road, I will, uh, you know, Mark and I will reunite on several uh, podcasting endeavors as well. So eh, that'll be. We'll just leave that open ended. Yeah, open ended because God knows how many more debates we have to cover. I'm going to say 75. All right, guys. Well, I do want to thank you all for joining us on this little journey through the campaign of Rand Paul. It was something that started as sort of a one-off podcast and uh, just seemed to click. People seemed to like it, so yeah. we kept doing it, and here yeah. we are. But Thank you all. Thank you very much. Keep listening to all of the podcasts, and we will keep spewing them out. And keep joining the conversation with us. You can find us on social media, facebook.com slash Lions of Liberty. You can find us over on the Twitter, at Lions of Liberty. And if you really want to join the conversation with us, talk to myself, talk to Brian McWilliams, you can head over to our Facebook forum, our private group at the Lions of Liberty Forum, which you can find over in your Facebook search bar. And until next time, guys, live long and live free. Bye, 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 Cause he's a running for a POTUS, running for a POTUS, not anymore, more, more, more. Bye, 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 Rand.